Here's a second example of a non-Hausdorff topological space. We start with the real line with the usual topology, so generated by open intervals. Our second space, x tilde, is just going to be the real line quotient out by the following equivalence relation. So we'll have x and y, real numbers are related. If and only if x and y differ by a multiple of an integral power of 2. Then we're going to give x tilde the quotient topology induced by the quotient map that sends the real line to x tilde. So here we're just going to take each real number, send it to its equivalence class under our relation. Questions. Describe x tilde. Then is x tilde Hausdorff? And if not, can we make it Hausdorff? Now, we begin by describing the points of x tilde. These are just going to be our equivalence classes for our relation. So the first step is we have to show that tilde is an equivalence relation. I'll leave that to you. So you have to show reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Now, if we consider equivalence classes, so the equivalence class for the real number x, we just take all y, such that x and y are related. So I'm just going to pick a real number and then multiply by powers of 2. If we choose specific numbers, so these three are going to be the prototypes that we'll get, we take 0. Multiplying by powers of 2 is always going to give us 0. So that's going to be in its own equivalence class. If we take 1 and multiply by powers of 2, in one direction we have 1, 2, 4, 8. In the other direction we have a half, a fourth, 1 eighth, and so on. For the equivalence class of minus 1, same idea as the equivalence class of 1, except now we just take all of these numbers with negatives. Now, when we work with quotient spaces, it's important that we pick good representatives for our equivalence classes. If we consider the equivalence relation as giving us a partition of our space, the real line, then those representatives are going to give us an index for the sets that occur in the partition. Now, let's consider the equivalence class of 1 from the previous board. So I'll link all the points up with these jumps. If we took a different point, say 1 and a quarter, it's going to have the same basic shape. Also, if I take the union of all classes going from 1 to 2, we're going to get a partition of the positive reals. OK, so note if I start at 1 and go to 2, recover all the reals, will all be pairwise disjoint, and note when we get to 2, we're back in the equivalence class for 1. So I'm just going to take this segment and then connect the endpoints. So we have a circle showing up in x tilde. Now, of course, we need to define quotient topology to make sense of that. So for the quotient topology, okay, we're going to assume x has a topology on it. We're going to have a surjective map carrying x to x tilde, call it q. Then we're going to define open sets in x tilde for the quotient topology by saying that u is open in x tilde if and only if q inverse of u is open in x. So the idea is we're just going to take all the open sets in x, push them over to x tilde using q, and define our topology that way. Now note, this makes q continuous and an open map. So, if Q is a bijection, it would be a homeomorphism. So this is what happens when we pull the bijection property. Now, we should check that's topology. And that's just an exercise in showing that inverse images are compatible with intersections and unions. So I'll leave that to you. With that, we have the topology for X tilde. Our space, we have two circles and a point. The topology is going to be the usual topology coming from the plane. So we have the usual topology on the circles. For the point, the only open set that contains that point is going to be all of x tilde. So this space is not Hausdorff since we can't separate E0 from any other point in the space. Of course, we want to show this rigorously. So on the circles, I'll leave it to you to show that. That's just pushing down intervals in the positive or negative region down onto our two circles. 
at E0, if we consider any open interval containing zero, say AB, it's gonna contain some subinterval, which is minus power of a half, comma, power of a half. Now, this interval, if we consider the picture of the previous board, is gonna to map to our entire space X tilde. So if we pick up zero, we have to hit the whole space under Q. Now, by the description here, if we throw away E0, we're gonna be left with a Hausdorff space. So we'll just have the usual union of two circles. Okay, even better, our map Q is gonna go from being a quotient map to being a covering map. So this is gonna have really nice behavior as long as we stay away from E0.